Episode 43, Someone Call an Ambulance. Olivia struggled to free herself, pulling against her mother-in-law's grasp. Brenda was stronger than she looked. Olivia pulled in vain, trying to back away. After a few seconds, the older woman's fingers slipped and Olivia fell backward, striking her back against the trunk of the tree. She sat there under the leaves, wincing in pain and feeling slightly embarrassed. Brenda stood over her, hands on her hips. This is my house. As long as I'm still breathing, you're not going in. She's so angry. If she carries on like this, she might not be breathing for much longer. All right, calm down. You'll give yourself a heart attack. Oh, like you'd care. I bet you'd love it if I had a heart attack, wouldn't you? She looks set to burst a blood vessel, standing there, yelling and screaming in the street. Olivia gave a wry smile. If she puts herself in the hospital, she'll only have herself to blame. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. She put a hand to her pained back, trying to decide whether it was safe to stand. Okay, fine. I won't go in. I'll just wait out here. Besides, by now, Kevin will have already walked in on Freddie and Janet, doing whatever they're doing, and I can't do anything to stop him now. It was only a matter of time anyway, but judging by his mood when he walked in there, there'll be a fight about it. Even after what happened between her and Freddie, she had been the one made out to be the villain. The Chin family, relying on their money and power, had swept her out of the house and asked her to sign a divorce agreement, which, by anyone's standards, would be bullying. But she hadn't done anything to cause a fuss. She hadn't wanted to cause trouble, afraid of what her two uncles would think. Now, though, maybe it would be better to break a few eggshells so the people of San Francisco can see Freddy for the disgusting man he is. She hadn't realized someone else had arrived until a pair of powerful hands had reached out and gently pulled her to her feet. She heard Mr. Sniper's slightly hoarse voice in her ear. Olivia, are you okay? The corner of her mouth lifted in a half smile, and she nodded her head. I'm okay, just a small bump. He ran his hands over her back, testing for any sign of soreness. He'd obviously seen what had happened and was worried for her. I'll take you to the hospital later. Best to get checked out after a fall. No, I'm okay, she said, a little more forcefully than she intended. There's no damage done. It'll take more than a little fall to break me. The meaning of her words was clear, surprising him. So, my kitten has claws, hmm? She stretched, moving her back against the slowly dissipating pain. Oh, I've always had claws. They just don't always come out. Good to know, he chuckled. She scrunched her nose up briefly as she looked at him, not sure whether to joke or be serious. What you just saw, can you please keep it to yourself? Or at least don't do anything to make it worse? If you're sure, he looked at her and smiled. But I'll remember. He's always so calm, she thought to herself. It's impossible to stay angry around him. She looked at him, her heart flushed with emotion, forgetting all else. I'm so lucky to have found him. After all I've been through, surely I deserve to be happy. And we're becoming closer, too. With all this time spent together, two hearts beating as one. And who are you? Brenda's question interrupted her reverie. She was glaring at Mr. Sniper like he was dirt on her shoe. She looked him up and down, her eyes uncertain. He straightened and turned to face the older woman. I'm Olivia's boyfriend. Ha! She sneered with a disbelieving look on her face. Well, isn't that something? No wonder you agreed to a divorce so easily. Turns out you had another man all along. Well... You won't get any money out of Freddy now. You've just shot yourself in the foot. Olivia felt her anger rising again. Yes, I found another man, a good man. But Freddy's the one who ended our marriage by getting Janet pregnant. That's grounds for divorce right there. And I'll be entitled to half of what's his. 
Don't try making things difficult, or I'll see your precious family in court. Oh, now you've got a man at your back. You dare to challenge me? Brenda snarled. But your boyfriend doesn't even dare show his face. Why are you wearing a mask? Afraid people will recognize you as a wanted criminal or something? Olivia stepped forward to respond, but Mr. Sniper held out an arm to stop her. Even in the face of such an accusation, he remained calm. If I were a wanted criminal, do you think I'd just stand here and let you bully my girlfriend in front of me? Do you think I wouldn't put you in the ground? Her face instantly paled, and she stepped back, keeping a wary eye on him. What are you going to do? This isn't some lawless backwater. You dare do anything to me, and my son will make you pay. Well, if I'm already a wanted criminal, what difference is one more body going to make? What do you think? As soon as he took a step forward, Brenda turned and ran to her front door, calling out in a terrified shout, Freddy, Freddy, call the police! Olivia smiled behind her hand, but in truth, she was a little worried. You should go. If the police come, they'll make you take off your mask. Olivia, you really care about me? She gave him a gentle push. Well... I don't want you becoming a wanted criminal. I'm being serious. I want to marry you as soon as I can. She gave a little smile at his words. She always did. He wasn't in so much of a rush at first, though. We can wait, she said aloud. We can talk about it after you've sorted your affairs out. When you tell me all the truths, you can't tell me right now. The rush he seemed to be in had started alarm bells ringing. She didn't want to blindly walk into another prison after walking out of the first. I need to keep my wits about me. Before he could respond, a scream came from inside the house. They both heard it, but Olivia was first to recognize the source of the scream. That was Janet. His face was still calm somehow. Come on, let's go find out what's going on. The master bedroom was on the second floor. Olivia knew the way and ran up the stairs. Mr. Sniper, close behind her. Before they reached the door, another cry came out to greet them. It hurts! Freddy! Help me! My baby! There was another scream from Brenda this time. There's blood! You're bleeding! Someone! Call an ambulance! The door slammed open, and Freddy rushed out with Janet in his arms. He nearly ran straight into Olivia and Mr. Sniper. He gritted his teeth and looked at the mask on Mr. Sniper's face. Finally, he looked into Olivia's eyes and said, Olivia, give me a little more time. What are you talking about? Brenda wailed. Get her to the hospital quickly. What if she loses my little grandson? He didn't dare to delay any longer. He ran down the stairs Janet whimpering in his arms. Soon, they heard the roar of an engine from outside, and with a screech of tires, they were gone. The house, which had just been a riot of noise, was now filled with dead silence. Olivia gently pushed the door all the way open and saw Kevin crouched on the ground with his head lowered, his shoulders shaking. Uncle Kevin... Olivia squatted carefully beside him and said in a soft voice, Are you okay? I didn't mean it. His words were muffled, his face still pressed against his legs. I just wanted her to listen to me, so I grabbed her arm. I didn't want to hurt her, but she struggled. I let go, and she fell against the bed. He looked up at her then, tears streaming down his face. Olivia... She hit her stomach on the corner of the bed. Will you go to the hospital and see if she's okay? I'm afraid something will happen to the baby and it'll be all my fault. His eyes were red, his shoulders drooping, and his whole body shook each time he took a breath. 
like it was great effort to get the air into his lungs. Olivia was ill, at ease, but relented. Freddie's already there, but I suppose it might help cool things down if I took Brenda along to the hospital too. She looked at him thoughtfully. Uncle Kevin, did Freddie start a fight with you? No, he was angry, but he didn't start a fight. He looked shameful of anything. I was so riled up. I gave him a good piece of my mind, but we didn't fight. She breathed a sigh of relief. I didn't mean to lose my temper. I've been trying to keep you from starting a fight, and here I go, starting one myself. But I just don't understand what's happened here. It's like she's been brainwashed. Why is she just letting him boss her around like that? Of course, Olivia knew what was really going on. Can I tell my uncle what she's really like, though? She's not as simple as he thinks. She's a cold, calculating woman who will do anything to get what she wants, even having a baby with someone else's husband to force her way into a rich family. Instead, she said, I'm not sure. Maybe it's true love. Come on, let's leave their business alone, okay? She's made her decision. Let's leave her to it. Kevin scratched his head irritably. Okay, I'm okay. Just let me cool down a bit. You go and check that she's all right. If she's lost her child because of me, though, I'll never forgive myself. She was still a little worried about him, but there was nothing more she could do. Mr. Sniper seemed to notice her hesitation. He patted her on the shoulder and said, Go. I'll stay with your uncle. Sometimes it helps in these situations to have a man-to-man -man talk. You go to the hospital. If she has a miscarriage, your uncle could be found criminally responsible. I'll calm him down and we'll talk through his options. Her heart sank on hearing this, but she knew the truth in his words. That's exactly what Janet would do. The baby she carries is her bargaining chip to get her into this family. If the baby is gone, she'll be more upset at losing that than losing the child. She wouldn't even think twice about going after Kevin for revenge. She gritted her teeth and nodded. I'll go, but my uncle... Don't worry, I'll talk to him and we'll meet you at the hospital later. She walked down the stairs, calling for Brenda, but she was not there. Had she left for the hospital already or gone to inform the police to complicate the situation and create more trouble? With all these thoughts rushing in her head, Olivia hailed a taxi and went to the hospital alone.